For the second part of the 10.2 day two notes, we have two more binomial expansions, and then we're going to do a little work with finding one specific term within an expansion. Here's our first example, five minus two y to the third power. This means we're in row three of Pascal's triangle, and that indicates that we're going to have four terms. N equals three, and we'll go from there. For our columns, remember we're gonna have three columns. We wanna make sure we have enough room for both pages on our, or both problems on our paper. Whoa, okay, we'll try that again. You're welcome to use the edges of your paper as well for this problem if you need more room to get everything to fit. The first column just describes the numbers we're gonna get in Pascal's triangle. Remember the second column is always the first term. Here's where we have to be super careful. In this third column, because it's a subtraction problem, we have to put negative 2y as our parenthesis. All right, we're in row three, so this means we're gonna have three C0 for our first term, three C1, three C2, and three C3. There, see how we have four terms? Because we start with zero and we end with the, end with the same R value as the N value. Now the five is gonna start with a matching exponent from the original problem. The five is gonna be raised to the third power, and then it decreases in value, if you remember from the video for the first part. The last five will always be to that zero power. The negative two y starts with zero and then simply increases. So it's really not that hard to write out, we just have to evaluate it all when we're done. And remember, this takes the place of foiling a whole bunch of times and then trying to combine like terms. Trust me, once you get the hang of it, this really is a more useful method. Now we just have to evaluate. We've got this first group here. 3C0 is 1. 5 to the third power is 125. And negative 2y to the 0 power is also 1. Oopsie, not times. Which, or not equals. <laughs> I meant times. Times 1. And that equals 125. I'd like you to actually try the rest of these. Evaluate each parenthesis individually and then see if you can multiply them together. Here's a hint. Some answers will be positive and some will be negative. Press play when you're ready. This is, or these are my results from doing those steps. 3C1 is 3, 5 squared is 25, negative 2y to the first power is negative 2y. When I multiply all of my coefficients together, I got negative 150y. In the next row, 3 times 5 times 4y squared, remember negative 2 squared is positive 4, I got positive 60y squared. And in that last column or last row, I got 1 times 1 times negative 2 to the third power, which is negative 8, and then y to the third power, leaving my coefficient to be negative 8. What this means is we're going to have addition and subtraction problems. Therefore, 5 minus 2y to the third power in standard form would be 125 minus 150y plus 60y squared, last but not least, minus 8y to the third. There's your binomial expansion. Let's try just one more. x squared plus 3y to the fourth power. Now we always start with our exponent outside of the parenthesis. n equals 4, so this means we're in row 4 of Pascal's triangle which means we're going to have five terms in our final answer. Remember, this alleviates writing this out four times and having to foil all of our parts. We're gonna create our table again, three columns, so I need two rows, or two vertical lines, okay? Our NCR helps us define that first coefficient. Look at our A value this time. It already has an exponent. We're gonna have to think through that as we raise it to different other powers. The b, it's plus 3y, so our b has a coefficient and a variable. Again, we have to be really mindful of those parentheses. To get our five terms, we're going to start with n equals 4. We'll do 4c0, 4c1, all the way down till we get to 4c4. And that helps us define all of our terms. We have five terms in that column. Now we're gonna take the x squared, and I know this is a lot of parentheses, so we won't do a lot of these for practice. We'll just make sure we can take our time with the detail. This gets raised to the fourth power, and then it gets raised to one less, and then one less again, and one less again, 
until we get down to zero. You got it, the 3y in parentheses just does the reverse. Like so. There we go. There's all of our product values in each column. Now your goal will be to multiply straight across. Again, I want you to try this. The more you can do independently, the easier the homework will be. Please try all five of these terms. Once you get them, press play and we'll see if we have a match. If not, take time to look at where we had different values. Are you ready? Let's take a look. In my first term, I got x to the eighth. My second term, I got 12 x to the sixth, y to the first. Third term, 54 x fourth, y to the second. 108 for my fourth term, 108 x squared, y to the third. And then my last term, 81 y to the fourth power. Notice when we do power to a power, we multiply. So we had to get those values in there. And then in that parentheses, we had to raise the three to the power and the exponent. Now I'd like to actually go back to the table. I'm wondering if you notice anything unique about the table. There are some unique patterns here, and this is gonna help us in our final part of the lesson. Notice that if you have a zero here for your R value, the exponent here is zero. But there's also a connection with the two exponents in the problem in that whole row. They add up to the original exponent. So let's try that idea again. In that second row, our R value is one, and so is that second exponent. But then the two exponents together also equal that same original exponent. And that pattern continues. We have a match here and here, and then together the two values add up to our four, and it continues on. This is something that will help us on the last two problems on the next page. For these two examples, we're asked to find just the coefficient of a particular term. So we're not looking to expand all of the problems, I just want one part. I would like the coefficient for the x to the fourth term in the expansion of, wow, look at this, 3x plus 2 to the tenth power. Whoa! If we have the tenth power, that means n equals 10. We're in the tenth row of Pascal's triangle, which means we're going to have 11 terms if we were expanding it all together. That would be crazy. But we only want one coefficient for one of the terms. When I make my columns, I'm going to focus mostly on finding that second column. Notice that x is in the first term. So if we do 3x for that first term's location, we know that the second term would be 2, and then the first column is that ncr column. But my focus is going to be in that middle column. We always start with the biggest exponent, and then we make our way down. So it's 10 and 9, and we want to keep going until we get to that fourth power, because then that would have an x to the fourth in it. 3x to the sixth, so you have to kind of write tiny here to get this to fit, to the fifth, and I finally get there in this term right here. So this is our space that we want to find right here. Notice if we count all the way down, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh term. Wow, that's crazy. So if that coefficient or if that exponent is four, that means the two would have to be able to have an exponent where they add up to 10, the original exponent for the problem. That means the two would have to be raised to the sixth power because six and four would equal 10. Now that six helps us over here because that's the NCR rule. N is 10 and then the R value always matches that second exponent. I hope you followed that because we're gonna try that again on the next one. But now our goal is to figure out just this coefficient. So on your calculator, let's figure out 10C6. 10C6, what do we get for that? We should get 210 times 3x to the fourth, which would be 81x to the fourth, times 2 to the sixth. Wow, this is going to get big. That's 64. We're going to take 210 times 81x to the fourth times 64. 
That will help us find our coefficient. If we multiply these numbers together, get this, we get 1,088,640 x to the fourth. But remember the original problem, everybody? We were just asked for the coefficient. We weren't asked for the entire term. Therefore, the coefficient is just, whoops, I went too far, is just the number in front of the variable. So that is the final answer. I think we need to try another one. Here's our last one. Try your best to stick with me. Find the coefficient of the x to the fifth term in the expansion of x minus 3 to the seventh power. Our goal for these problems will be to try to just use the definition and not have to write out all the terms within that definition. So I know that we need an NCR rule. We're going to multiply that. I know we're going to multiply it to something with x. That's our first term. And I know we're going to multiply it to something with that negative 3. And this is where our parenthesis is super important. Notice we want x to the fifth. So I need x to the fifth power. That means negative 3 has to add up to a power that would give us the original exponent of 7. So negative 3 would have to be raised to the 2 power, so that 5 plus 2, again, equals that 7. Remember that 2 helps us with the NCR, and the N value is 7, because that's the row we're in when it's raised to the 7th power. So without having to create that table to figure out what term we're at, we should be able to just kind of work backwards with that exponent. Here's what we need to do then. 7c2, x to the fifth, we'll just leave that, but then we have to do negative 3 squared. Now, 7c2 on your calculator, what do you get when you type that in? We should get 21. x to the fifth doesn't change. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. We have to multiply all those together. 21 times x to the fifth times 9. This one isn't quite as aggressive as the last one. We get 189x to the fifth. That would be the full term, but if we just want the coefficient, the answer is 189. And this is 10.2, day two, the part two notes.